Great American 1970s movie, as you can see, starring Jack Nicholson, The Last Detail. Here's what I think you should watch this movie coming up next. The Last Detail, or The Last Detail, maybe there's, there's a pun on that word in the title, are about two soldiers at stateside in Virginia who are transporting a prisoner, another soldier, to a political prison for a certain crime. And the movie really is just about that. It stars Jack Nicholson in, in a free-ranging performance, much, much more so than most of his performances, surprisingly enough, as Badusky. Badusky's nickname is Badass, and he's sort of the leader, but not really. He's the dynamic energy of this trio in the movie. Along with Badusky is Mule Hall, starring Otis Young, in a great turn, nicknamed Mule. And these two are, are transporting Randy Quaid, who plays an 18-year-old Meadows, who has done a crime on a military base, but what crime has he done? We actually don't know too much about it. He's stolen or tried to steal $40 from a charity fund, and for that he's getting eight years in a military prison and a dishonorable discharge, a ridiculously harsh sentence. And the two men, Badusky and, and Mulehall, who are transporting him know it's completely unjust, and yet they need to do their duty and take him from Virginia to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Now these two guys have seven days, they get a per diem, also the prisoner gets a per diem, so their initial thought is, hey, let's take him immediately to New Hampshire, take his per diem money, and go on a bender for a week where we spend all this money on a bunch of stuff, decadent stuff, and then we'll just have fun for a week. But as this kind of movie goes, they kind of sort of grow to like him. They respect him maybe as a younger brother or a son. That's at least in a way what Badusky, one way that Badusky or Badass relates to, you know, Meadows. And so they start to introduce Meadows to the finer pleasures of the world, such as Italian sausages <laughs> in New York City. Now I should tell you, this movie is directed by one of my favorites, Hal Ashby, wonderful director. Robert Town, one of the great all-time screenwriters, wrote the screenplay. And then, of course, there's Jack Nicholson in the movie. For those reasons alone, you should try this movie, see if you like it. But this movie will seem to be a lot of people meandering. Given the plot circumstances, these two guys have to transport this prisoner. One of the tensions is, will this prisoner escape? The other is, will they grow to like him and then let him go? But all that is sort of in a deep background through most of the movie as these guys wander around the East Coast of America. A very meandering film in which they'll encounter prostitutes, religion, a lot of food, a lot of eateries. In different circumstances, it's sort of a buddy road trip, but it's a trio road trip movie in which you're going to see America sort of as it is, or a vision of America, circa 1972-73. Of course, this movie takes place during the Vietnam War. These guys are in the Navy, and one question comes up, what do you think of Richard Nixon? Actually, it's asked of the soldiers in this movie, including the black soldier in this movie, interestingly enough, at an interesting time. Now, there is religion and Vietnam, and this kid Meadows is a sweet, innocent kid. Maybe he's a Christian, or he's got certain values that would, you know, comport to normie bourgeois America at this time, perhaps. And yet he's being introduced by these soldiers to other things. I'll just call them other things, but other things in life that he's never experienced. So I love this movie because it's an artistic meandering, and it's more like a broad spectrum, vague, ambiguous, wonderful comment complex, inherently complex comment on America versus anything you could pin down. I mean, if you tried to, and I've tried to describe this movie to you, but all descriptions of this movie fail because the movie is complex enough where it defies any description, any way to describe it. I mean, Badusky, yes, he relates to Meadows, a sort of a younger brother or a son, but that's not quite right. Mule Hall is the more dutiful of them all and he wants to get the prisoner to the prison. Yeah, sort of, but that's not quite right either. Meadows is a sweet, clean cut kid, but yeah, that's not quite right. And then Mule Hall and Badusky both see the injustice but and, and they want to undo it, but then they have to do their duty. That's not quite right either. And then the movie is also about what it's like to be in the Navy, to be in the military. What's the purpose of the military? How does the military relate to ordinary citizens in society? Also, the movie is about decadence in American society. I mean, these guys are going to get some money, not a lot of money, but some that they can spend or save. And what do they choose to do? But just spend it on, you know, food and sex, basically. Maybe as young, some young males would do. And yet, you know, what, what's the purpose of their lives? Why do they do what they do? These questions are in the background. They don't necessarily ask them that, but we see that they are estates and yet maybe bored. There, there's a malaise, a military malaise. Maybe they hate the military, but they call themselves lifers. That is mule and butt at least. And then they know that this injustice done to this kid is done out of a, a 
petty spite of the man. In fact, this movie has an interesting relationship to power, unseen power behind the scenes, one Richard Nixon in the presidency, to the old man, as they call, I think, the commander of the base who has sentenced Meadows to this horrible punishment. They just say this name, old man. Well, who is the man? And are Mule and Bud working for the man? Yes, they are. And they'll, they'll try to be, you know, free libertarian types who you know, hedonists who do whatever they want. But yet they're under the watch and care. And their incentive in life is to obey the man. And, you know, that's that comes up in this movie versus giving Meadows his freedom because of the injustice done to Meadows. Also, this movie defies description. It's not really a tragedy. It's not really a comedy. It is occasionally funny. But, you know, the in, look at the ending. And you ask some questions. I think Mule and Bud, what, what's the purpose of their journey here? And why did the movie end the way it does? I don't see it as a tragedy or comedy. That's how, in a way, that's how it also defies description. You could say this movie is a black comedy given to use of music, particularly military music, to spice things up. And yet, you know, I think there's, there's a decent sort of underlying distrust or, or annoyance at the military. I won't say hatred. But clearly in the movie, the Navy versus the Marines, they don't get along. They hate each other. The Navy men just want to beat up the Marines. And then these guys who are lifers, Bud and Mule Hall, they, you know, they don't want to be in the military, but they're duty bound to, to be in the military. And Bud wants to go crazy and have fun and drink beer all the time and be a rebel figure. He can't. You know, that, that sort of angst and desire to be a rebel, but you can't because you're you're working for the man is really interesting in this movie. One last thing I like about this movie, it conveys a sense of being cold, especially cold in the winter in America when there's no snow. In a lot of movies, to convey cold, you have snow, you have ice, you have freezing rain, something like that. Here in the movie, the men are just shivering and choose to shiver outside. It's very interesting versus going inside and being with crowds. I think these men want to be apart from crowds, and yet they are of a crowd. They're in the ultimate corporation, which is the US military. That is Mule and Bud in particular. And you see in the beginning of the movie, a very interesting opening shot where you have a crowd of men walking away from the camera and one man walking towards the camera. You, you tend to think in a movie like this, and, and it's true of Italian neorealism, for example, Bicycle Thieves, in which the individual versus the masses theme comes up here. But as it turns out, Ashby, really has fun with that because that character, that individual in the first shot is just a minor character who's only going to be in the movie for two minutes. And instead you see but Budusky and then Mule Hall go along with the crowd as it were, or do their duty in this movie, or they have to think about that versus being wanderers or rebels. So again, I strongly recommend this movie for the artists involved. Jack Nicholson is fun, maybe over the top and ridiculous, but fun in this movie. What do you think about this movie? Let us know in the comments and please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thanks and have a great day.